Доброго вечора, ми з України. Greetings, my friends, and welcome back to Shanka Show, stories about everyday life in the Soviet Union. I'm your host, Sergei Sputnikov. Здравствуйте, дорогі товариші. So recently I recorded a video where I tried to explain why the Soviet people like to hang rugs on the wall. And if you by any chance missed that video, I'll post the link below in the comment section. By the way, that video proved once again that I have no idea what I'm doing on YouTube because suddenly that video has five times higher views as usual and more regular viewers are choosing to watch it helping to increase its reach on YouTube recommendations. So yeah, it's uh, caught me totally by surprise. I do a lot of in-depth videos about life in the Soviet Union, but suddenly rugs on the walls, that the video that caught on fire. But speaking of the rugs on the walls in the Soviet apartments, I didn't post this picture in my previous video, and I think this is the best photo to show status symbol of the large beautiful rug being hung on the wall. Look at the family member faces. They smile with such a pride because this is that rug is expensive, huge and expensive. It's probably at least 2000 rubles being hung on the wall and everyone is so happy and proud. But one of my viewers pointed out that there's one more reason why uh, Soviet people had rugs on the walls, although it relates only to the homes in the villages, not the apartment buildings in the cities. You see, the majority of private homes in the villages, at least in Ukraine and Russia, Belarus, were log cabins. Later in the 80s, they started using brick, but before, for many, many years, people were using logs, like you see in this picture. So inside of the house, they will use clay and thatch, so that tall grass that grows along the banks and the rivers, they'll be mixed, line up the walls, and then mixed clay, and that will be like your, uh, what applied to inner walls. So in order to make rooms prettier inside, people apply chalk on the walls. That's why in the most pictures you see of the village homes inside, the walls always plain white with some shading, maybe yellowish or grayish. It's chalk. And I don't recall seeing any wallpaper in the village homes. Most of the times there would be just plain white chalk walls. Tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Maybe it was impossible to apply glue to install the wallpaper on the clay, or maybe that was just expensive for the regular village people. So definitely you know, applying just chalk, you know, you just put the roller and you roll or use the brush. That was the cheapest way to make walls look good. But if you can imagine if you lean against the chalk wall or you touch the chalk wall, you always have white spots on your clothing or on your hands uh, so that's the reason why in the villages people always had those decorative rugs velvet rugs by their beds and not only by the beds if you can see on this picture i'm laying on the top of the my mother's wood burning brick stove and once again on the wall there's a rug so you don't get uh, chalk marks on your clothing you know it's kind of funny i look closer to that rug behind me and I recognize that we used to have it in our apartment in Kiev, but it was on the floor. So my mom uh, brought that rug up north to the village. Seems like she maybe cut it down, or maybe it's laying flat and then it goes up on the wall. Uh, so yeah, she utilized the floor rug uh, to apply to the wall in the village. And by the way, this is how you can recognize that the picture was taken in the city apartment versus village home in the cities. There'll be wallpaper on the walls and reclining couches, like click-clack couches you can turn into bed at night and use as a sofa during the day because people had tiny apartments with one or only two rooms. Meanwhile, in the village homes, you could see real beds. So if you see a picture with the real bed and rug on the wall by it, was, then you know it's the picture was taken in some private home in the village, not in an apartment building. When I was going through my old pictures, I stumbled upon this one, so I took that in the northern Ukraine, and the house is pretty much done, roof already missing, but there's a still rug hanging on the chalk wall, as you can see, and it looks like it's the one with the 
deer in the forest scene. This picture has no rugs on the walls, but this is uh, my mom while we visited the house of her grandparents. So this house surprisingly is still in a decent shape for being over 100 year old because it was built from the oak logs, not from the pine logs like it's usually done in northern Ukraine. And you can recognize famous blue paint on the windows. And another sign you can impress your friends with knowledge. Uh, the floors in the villages will be always painted white plank wood floors. So there'll be just white boards, wooden boards, and they'll be painted. Okay, my friends, that's all I have for today. Please don't forget to like this video. It helps YouTube to notice it and maybe push it up in its algorithm. And we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Hello, my name is Mr. Jerich. I'm from Lebanon. Good morning, my name is Jack. My name is Sarah Lebanon. I'm from Lebanon. Good morning, my name is Alan Moore. I'm from Lebanon. I'm from Lebanon. Hi, my name is Rosa Almerich, I'm from Bosnia. Hi, my name is Amir Lutovic, I'm from Bosnia. Hi, my name is Mayra Hirakic, and I'm from Bosnia. Hi, my name is Fatima Kenik, I'm from Bosnia. Hi, my name is Benjamin Kenik, and I'm from Bosnia. Hi, my name is Linda Cloud, 
and I'm from Canada, and I can vote! <laughs> Hi, my name is Marisela Pasquale, and I'm from Hi, my name is Aline Peterson, and I'm from Latvia, and I have waited years to become a citizen. <laughs> and I'm proud today to become a citizen, with tears to my eyes. <laughs> I'm Jeffrey, uh, I came from Ukraine. Good morning, I'm Rick Northrup of the Canada. Good morning, this is Executive Liberty coming here. Good morning, this is Fahes Nikani, born in India. Sergey uh, wrote a book based on diaries he made when he was first in the United States. And I, as I understand, this is just volume one, right? That's good. He's going to have more, multiple volumes coming out. Well, I said, well, since uh, Sergey is kind enough to come up and speak with us, I bought the book. I said, I might as well read this. I read this in one sitting, two hours, two and a half hours. I just couldn't put it down. It was so fascinating because uh, your writing is very compelling, for one. And his story is very interesting for two. It's really interesting. You know, we've lived here our whole lives. We don't have that perspective. It's just so interesting to hear someone else's perspective about what we take for granted. So I hope you really tune in and, and listen to what he has to say. It's a very interesting, very informed perspective. Sergey is not a historian. He's an electrical engineer by trade, but I find that he has a depth of understanding on history, economics, culture. So just a, just a very observant fellow and a, a great storyteller. So. Uh, like